Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is May 15th, 2021, and I am your co-host, The Fat Wizard, joined today by... Lobos. And today we're taking a look at Miss 3 Exile, released on in North America, May 7th, 2001. Here's something that's crazy. We actually originally scheduled this episode to be recorded on May 8th, like the day after, like 20 mm-hmm. years after. It's so crazy. Like an anniversary so, thing. Yeah. Yeah, 20-year anniversary. It was great to come back to Mist, though. You know, we played, we covered Mist 1 and 2 in prior episodes, and in 2001, you know, of course, this game came out, so 2021, we were first eligible to play Mist 3, and I, I gotta say, I think it was well worth the wait. I would <laughs> probably say it's probably my favorite Mist of all mm. three, but Lobos, what do you think about that? I know it's gonna be a contentious uh. contentious statement, but what do you, th- what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not super. I don't super lean towards one or the other. I do have a lot of nostalgia for the first mist, so that one's probably just got a special place in my heart. But I enjoy all of them. All of them seem to have like, um, mostly very enjoyable stuff, and then one thing that's really hard and can be <laughs> frustrating. Uh, and uh, Mystery Exile, I feel, was no, no, uh, no different from that. But I loved it. I, lo- I love these puzzle games like so much. Yeah, I, I do feel like Miss Three was probably the easiest of all of them, and there there was only one spot, and I bet it's different for you. Oh. Uh, so I'm curious. Like we'll we'll get to it hopefully where I got stuck, and then you speak up where you get stuck. Sure. Here. Yeah. But we start we start out uh, with a nice little. Uh, cut scene here and it was interesting here is this is actually made by a diff- different development team oh. it was um ubisoft took it over and then they they gave it to some developer i think it was in the the intro here uh, but they did get the same character that played atris uh as we see here at the beginning and then of course we see catherine with a child this is 10 years after the fall of riven by the way and catherine is with child oh. or, or with, with a with a born child um, and I don't remember if it's the same actress that played. No, it's a different uh, one. Kath- okay, a different one. Okay. Yeah. And also, interestingly enough, your the main character is actually not the. I don't remember what they call him like the the wanderer. I think is mm. what they called in the first or second one. Yeah, I think so. In this one, you're you're just like a friend. <laughs> so your friend has come over, and we're gonna have some tea with Atris and Catherine. So how did you uh, what what did you think about the start of this? You know, it's kind of a a calm as all mists tend to be, right? <laughs> sure. But walk me through your thought here. Yeah, well, the first thing I noticed definitely is that you actually have full control of the camera. Like you you can look yeah. in full 360 degrees and that was new if I recall correctly for the mist series. Yeah, cuz the previous ones were just still images. Yeah, you would just you turn. Would, you'd be able to look at that. Basically yeah. 90 degrees and then you would look that way. So that was cool. Um it looked great, and uh, yeah, I, I, I very quickly fell into the, to, to that mist, you know, universe, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm back. There's Atris, you know, Catherine, and, and let's see what's going on. Yeah, and so you go in there, and there's a big, big study there, Atris's study, and he talks a little bit about a, a, this new age he's inventing called Relation, and... Uh, you get some hints there of something weird going on. I think you like read some journal and, uh, and you know, and uh, eventually you get to a spot where this guy comes out. He, he basically like portals in, he l- uses a linking book to portal in and he just like sets the drapes on fire and then steals the book of relation. And the reason why relation is super important is if you, if you are well versed in the mist oh. lore, mm-hmm. you'll know about the Dunny. Mm. And uh, Atreus is like one of the last, if not the last, survivor of the Dunny race, which was uh, which was um, basically oh. destroyed by a plague. And so, what he has done is he is trying to construct this second land for the Dunny race. And so, the re- relation is really important for for Atreus here. And uh, this guy. Do you remember his name? It's like starts with an S. Oh, the the evil guy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Saavedra is his name. 
Yeah, yeah. he comes in and, and basically messes with his plans. And then I think you noticed right away, right. but this is that was played by a, a famous actor. Well, I, I call him like semi-famous actor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, he's a fantastic actor, but he doesn't get a lot of leading roles. Do you remember his name? Uh, is his first name Brian? Some, uh, uh, Brad. Brad Dorif is his Brad, name. And yeah. uh, he played Brad Grima Wormtongue in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. But that was the first thing I said. I was like, is that... <laughs> is that Worm Tongue from Lord of the Rings? And I was kind of joking about it. And then, like, much yeah. later in the game, they show him up closer. And I was like, that's him. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, awesome. So it was cool that they. Well, another got thing that, that I thought was really funny is he's been a, in a couple different movies. He was in Clockwork Orange, mm-hmm. uh, opposite, mm-hmm. not an opposite, but next to um, Jack Nicholson there. And um, in that movie, he has this line where he's like, no, 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 no. And he does that ah. same thing in this game, like, much yes. later on yes. there. So. There's some pretty dramatic so, sequences with him. <laughs> <laughs> towards he does the a end. good job. He does a really oh, yeah. great job. No, at, you I, know, I liked it a lot. I think it's a fine line trying to chew the scenery and actually legitimately be entertaining and, and well, you know, I think he, he straddles that real nicely mm. there. He was a good character. Kind of a mix of yeah, like, he you think he's one. evil, but then he's got, he's got intentions behind what he's doing and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. So this is the uh, first age. We basically follow him into the first age. That it, it's this is sort of like your hub age, where it's got uh, it's got a bunch of different ages linked off to it, and this is more or less like your area to run around and explore and try to figure out how to access these three ages. Mm. Yeah, this one was and called just... uh, Jinanin, I believe, and yeah. um, I think. As soon as you arrive, you see uh, Saavedro, like, kind of run and lock himself in, in like, a central tower area. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you can actually peer through the window, and there's, like, <laughs> maybe, like, seven or eight unique little uh, motion yeah. videos of him just walking by the door. And I was like, when's it going to do something different? <laughs> like, but it didn't end up doing anything crazy. But yeah. it was cool. So the first puzzle I go to is this... Um, it's this puzzle where it's got this like little bridge and the bridge elevates multi- multiple different sections of the bridge will lower and elevate it. Mm. And really what you want to do there is you want to, you want to open a door on the other side of this bridge and then you, there's this big like ball thing. And then you want to use that bridge, basically the varying heights to move that ball into the area where you just open the door because there's a big hole in the ground there. And so when that ball goes in there, it'll, um, it'll like fill in that hole. Is that correct? I I'm having trouble kind of re- yeah. visualizing it, but it's, I, I remember yeah. bridge stuff with like that. Yeah. Sure. We just, we just watched it, but we gotcha. were talking about other stuff. So I think it was, gotcha, like, gotcha. it was something, it was something to that effect there. Uh, and then I get to a puzzle where it has like these four concentric rings with these little marbles you can move around. Right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I'm looking around. I'm like, all right, well, I know that, you know, we've played Miss Games. Yeah. We know that there is pretty obvious if you don't know exactly what you're supposed to do, you're probably not going to figure it out and you're probably not going <laughs> to, you, you're not intended to. So I went off into exploring a little bit. Yeah, that's generally what I do. I just run around and look for puzzles, see if they are, you know, just logic based and you can figure them out right there or if you're going to need yeah. stuff later. So you know what to keep an eye out for, and um, so yeah, we're we're coming to the workshop here, which basically shows a bunch of of uh, clues. And I'm wondering, Lobos, as you look at around this, are you seeing any clues that you might have you might have like you seen initially, but then you got to the puzzle and you completely forgot that? Existed? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The one yeah. with the the little uh, like wicker kind of people hanging um, was a clue for. <laughs> One of the the one age that I had the most trouble with, for sure. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if you found that, but it's like near the doorway, uh, and it's it's like uh, I think two guys hanging on one side and one hanging on another, and it's like balanced. Um, but we'll we'll see what puzzle yeah. that's for later. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not sure which puzzle that's for. Okay. The one that okay. I saw that I was most interested in is they have a bunch of spherical balls and they have uh, what looks to be like a glass or ice or crystal ball and then wooden balls. Oh, yep. And I had solved that puzzle just kind of like trial and error and it wasn't until I watched you stream this and go through the workshop. I'm like, oh, that's where, that's how you're supposed to know that. So we'll get to that 
a little bit later. Okay. Uh, that's that the, was, that's uh, the same puzzle, by the that way, was that one I'm talking with I wish the I uh, uh, little balancing that puppets. Exists. Oh, it is? Okay. Mm. Yep. Okay. Inside this workshop is an elevator, and I know there was a puzzle below the elevator, but mm -hmm. there was also this like little grate that would spin around and then like shut. Do you did you get a sense of what that was all about? Um, you know what I'm talking about. Do you mean on the actual elevator, like the whole thing? On the actual, yeah. So yeah. you would like try to open it, and it would like it would open the gate, but then it would immediately shut again. Yeah, I think solving these puzzles was part of that. Just like like whenever it. It came all the way down. It would rotate a doorway towards a certain direction, but it wasn't like the opening that you could actually go through. So, like, I, I thought it was part of that, oh, I but I, I can't remember exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But the real puzzle is once you once you get that elevator go up to go up, you can then access below the elevator, and on each of the four, we'll call them walls. There's yeah. like a little hole in it, and there's like four different sections to a puzzle, and uh, of course, you pick up. A book. Um, I don't remember if this is Savedro's book or uh, Atris's book, but uh, it kind of yeah. clues you in into. Yeah, I think you find uh, what you need to when do. You first if you don't solve this puzzle, in, maybe. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. 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 I think, oh no, I think no, you're right. You pick it. You pick it up off the ground. Yeah, it's like his journal or something. And yeah. then you also have, I think, a book from Atris, kind of talking about Relishan yes. or that sort, like mm -hmm. details around it. Yeah, and. Yeah, and that, that actually comes into play much later on in the game. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But I want to talk a little bit more about this elevator because if you don't solve the puzzle, what happens is you can go up to the elevator, but the door doesn't open. And so that's where you can kind of see uh, Saavedra there. And he's kind of taunting us now. This is so <laughs> great. He's like, hey, do you want to come and get your book? And he what he's doing, he's like filling up this um, this little basin with some sort of material. And he's going to use this to activate essentially like a, I don't know, like a linking book so we can teleport to a new area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, some sort of portal or something like that. So we're still in Janan, and uh, we're experimenting. We found a little, uh, I don't know, like a little rabbit thing. What, what do you think this is, Lobos? Yeah, it's like a little, like, uh, kind of... Like a, a um, rat thing. Yeah, almost like, like a reptilian... Uh, yeah, yeah, rat or some sort of vermin like that. And, uh, yeah, you get a clue here how he likes to uh, eat this kind of plant that grows on the sides of the walls. Yeah. as it, it, like, bubbles up. Uh, I think it, it retracts in fear or something like that. And that's a, that's a puzzle for or a hint for getting access to one of the areas, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's, I think it's this area right here. And so I, ha I do have subtitles on which kind of clues you into a puzzle because you've got like this little, um, it's like a mega microphone thing and you're pointing it around. And as you uncover new areas, it will actually say what the thing is. So mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, well, that's significant, right? Yeah. They wouldn't just have. And so like some of the things are like bridge creaking, ocean yeah. wind. And one of them was like squee chirps or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, squee chirps. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. It, it's uh, kind yeah. of like the they're the island on the first mist that's totally, like, audio-based, where you, you mm -hmm. pick the frequency and then you hear, like, a sound, like lava going or air going and um, The thing that you're actually moving is actually a giant flower. It's like an orchid, so, like, yeah. it's got this yeah. big stem that comes out that you, that you aim. It's pretty cool. I, I enjoyed watching your stream because you uh, you had noticed that there were these distinct sounds and you started writing these down, and you're like, hey, if you wonder why I'm writing this down, it's because I've played Mist before. Right. I know how this stuff works. That's right. If There's you, if you don't, puzzle. you're going to have to do a lot of backtracking and hope you remember yeah. certain things. Yeah, and then uh, here's another puzzle. I think uh, I actually spin this around. There's like a little, uh, little hand crank you can do, and if you crank it enough, it opens up this little light that will shine. Um, but when I initially did it, I didn't notice that the light was bouncing off something else. So I kept spinning it and then mm. I didn't notice that there was this whole puzzle here. So we get to that much later here. <laughs> yeah. W in exploring the uh, Jananin for the first time, there's a bunch of like little kind of like spotlights with color filters on them, I think. And you like point them, you can like rotate them so that they look at other spotlights. And it ends up being a whole thing eventually, but 
Yeah, we haven't, um, we've got that to that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're we're actually just trying to solve the uh, the puzzle for the uh, the elevator mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there. And so this one's uh, it's it's pretty cool, pretty satisfying because there's again four different things that all kind of have to lock in place there, and you finally get up there, and then like I was talking about, Savedro, he was filling up some sort of basin and now he has just activated a linking book and he is now gone. Um, and that's that, that, that plays right before you're able to actually enter into the area he was in. Conveniently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I got to say, I want to again, comment on the, the graphics here because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it, it really was a lot more pleasurable to play in this like third person or 3d mode because in mist one and to some degree mist two had some issues of, of not really understanding where your last area that you were looking at was. So it's like you're in an area and then you move forward and you're like, it doesn't always move you directly forward. Some time it angles you to the left or the right. And you're like, wait, did I go to the left path? Is there a right path? Where am I? Um, But being able to actually get your bearings and physically look around uh, was super handy there. Yeah, sometimes so, it, it just, you don't consistently move in like 90 or 45 degree, you know, increments. So one movement could twist you like 180 degrees and you don't realize it because you went down a spiral staircase or this and that. or So yeah. it can be tough. But yeah, this made it a lot easier for sure. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about the story here because I, I think that this story is stand alone enough that someone could come into Miss three mm. and have a pretty good understanding of what's going on, or at least still follow the thread because it really sure. is a really good story about Savedro and his, his sort of perils, right? Yeah. And his, he's trying to get your book. Yeah. His like people and what happened. It is, it does tie in and link back to the original mists yeah. um, because it talks about, uh, you know, uh, Atris's son's, and how they're, you know, they're going around messing up his, his ages that he's created that Atris kind of entrusted to them. And this is more of, this is kind of a, a closer look into more of the mischief that they caused. Yeah. And it's a much more personal look though. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I really liked that. I thought that, that whereas one and two, I, I kind of, I don't think I really understood the story without really looking into the lore. Mm. Whereas number three, I, I did feel like I got a good sense of what was going on, and I really felt that empathetic link with Savedro and, and to some degree Atris yeah. there. How, yeah, and, they, you know what? What do you think? It was it was easy to connect at what was going on because you have both sides. You have you have these videos kind of left over where Atris is, I think, talking like to his sons about uh, about various things, and then Savedro comes in and says, ah, like you know. It, he thinks you're Atris yeah. this whole time, so he's talking to you like <laughs> like you are, and kind of uh, uh, still creating this this you know he he he's just explaining everything that's happened, and you get a good sense that like basically the Savedro's whole like civilization, everybody he knows and loves was basically destroyed, and he got yeah. lost. Or he thinks. So he, he thinks, thinks. So he thinks. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, and yeah, and he was trapped in uh, uh, was it a particular age? Was it Narayan? I think. Um, uh, or is that? I don't remember if that's the age he was in. Uh, yeah, I, I know Narayan is like the age of lessons, and he wants us to basically take the lessons uh, that that Atris uh, forced his sons to take. I think. Uh, and and the real thing is the reason why Savedro is really angry is a- well so Atris is sort of like your he, he's very much trying to do the right thing but his sons for whatever reason have a real chip on their shoulder and so Atris comes by and he's sort of like this maybe missionary is the wrong way to <laughs> to use it but basically he's he's like trying to be be like a, a bring bring good spirits and faith to these ages and then his two sons uh Aknar and um Cirrus oh what's the other Cirrus, Cirrus. Mm-hmm. Aknar and Cirrus there are these two jerks that come in and basically burn everything down that Atreus has yeah. has done yeah. right I- and so Savedra was a victim of that and believes that his family was killed by Cirrus and Aknar 
Yeah, Atris is basically playing God in creating these other yeah. these worlds, and uh, you know, even if he has good intentions, like these bad things happen, and and that's mm -hmm. on him as well as his sons who are doing the direct, you know, destruction or man manipulation mm -hmm. or whatever. Um. Oh, and here's the color puzzle that we're at. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So let Man. me let me get a quick background on how we got here because we we kind of yeah. went off on a little tangent there. So we got to see this little movie clip there of Saavedra basically saying, "Hey, you need to find the three symbols to find me." And so you use these little beacons and you line up these symbols, uh, and those symbols are actual out in the overworld. Mm -hmm. So you basically line up like a lens with some symbol that's put on a rock or something, and that kind of shows you where you need to go. And then additionally, by, mag by basically honing in on that symbol, it aligns these like four little marbles on these concentric circles that we right, talked about right, earlier. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's it. <laughs> so I went to Voltric first. Where did you go first? Uh, so I actually went to Amateria first. Or Amateria. Oh, that's right. But you were like, this is, this is, this is the age I haven't done yet. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay, I'll go somewhere else first. Uh, I appreciate it, is, but that's the best one. Everyone loves that one, and it's good to save that one for last anyway. Yes, the best one. <laughs> uh, so which one did you go to next? I think I ended up... Uh, Voltaic is the energy one. I think this is the first one that I went to. Okay. Yeah, it is, yeah. definitely, definitely. So this one's cool. This one's it looks almost like an old strip mine, right? It's got these big, big canyons, yeah. and uh, it's got some water that seems to be powering like a wa a windmill or or something mm -hmm. water wheel yeah there's a dam so, and then yeah there's uh one of the the further in areas has kind of a big uh not like a track but but like a big cable that would that seems like a, a, a transportation method where some sort of cart like flies along it and you see yeah. that more later mm -hmm. this one oh i remember this puzzle open and i open and close this dam <laughs> I don't know how many times. Yeah, well, this is confusing to me because you open up the dam and you would expect the water to come rushing in, but it doesn't actually move. So I was trying to figure out, like, what the heck does opening up this dam do? And then I realized, oh, it actually does lower the water on one section, yeah. which allows you to crawl in this manhole and then lower, like, raise this other thing. Yeah. <laughs> and... I could not figure out what it did. Like, could you, I don't know. It took uh, me forever to figure this out. Yeah, I spent a while here for sure because I uh, I assumed because you're raising this, it seemed like it was making a gap, and I thought the water would have to drain a different way into there. But I, I don't recall exactly what it ended up doing, but it... it well, I, I, I yeah, we'll get there. Okay, and okay, I, I know okay, what we're missing right. here. All right. Yeah, we haven't done it yet because that that was like one of the last things I did on this oh, this age because I was very confused about this. So I keep going around to the strip mine, and yeah, we see this little uh, this little airship thing that you were talking about mm -hmm, earlier, mm -hmm. and so we're really just kind of exploring the area, and then also up here there are some steam vents, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. of course they're not activated that yet. So right. I think one of the things I really like about Mist 3 is it tends to be a little more linear. And once you get to an age, you kind of, there's not a lot of whole, there's not a lot of those places that um, are paralyzable, which is nice because it allows you to focus your efforts, in my opinion, right? Now, you could go to any of the three ages on their own, and, and that's where the game is more uh, open. Mm -hmm. But in this one, it's like, all right, well, first off, you need to power the generator to power the steam to get right. the thing moving. And so it's like almost all these things happen in sequence. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're actually just kind of going up on the catwalks here. I will, and, uh, I will say, I, even though you have the 360 control in this, there were a few times still where I just, even though I was looking my best, I was still missing like a path or two that would lead you yeah. to a whole nother set of stuff. And I was just like, oh no. Like it took me a while to find this path that you've gone up here, which okay. is, um, I think you climb climb a ladder up near where the steam vents were. Uh, and it, it leads you to a whole nother section. 
Yeah, like a pipe. You're walking on a, a large pipe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you get to the end of the pipe, and then you turn around, and then you, hopefully then you saw that, oh, I can actually go down. Right. Because yeah. if you turn, if you're like, oh, this is a dead end, then you wouldn't know what, where to go next. Yeah. So. so this here, why don't you walk us through this little lava puzzle thing, if you remember how this one works. Yeah. Well, this is interesting. There's a couple of little levers like this where um, they're kind of on a circular path with a line that goes through it and you've got this knob that you can move around to kind of figure out how it turns and there's this main kind of observation room where you're looking into a chamber that's got gears on the walls and as far as you know it's just empty um and if i recall from up there moving the lever one way will open like a big door and then lava will flow in (laughs) um which is cool and then also there's another uh, direction you can do, which opens another side of the door, which I don't remember if that even does anything. But you you can make your way into this chamber and control kind of this this cog on an arm that lets you slot it into other gears and adjust other, you know, you'll spend other gears and do other things in the room. And... Uh, your ultimate goal is to, yeah, lift it up, I believe, and you. there's a switch I think you hit. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and it's <laughs> – this it, Mist does this a lot where you'll press a button, and it doesn't actually show you what it's doing. You actually <laughs> have to look around. And in this situation, if you press a button and then you look up, you can see there is now a fan that is spinning. Mm. And it's it's pretty obvious because the the way the lighting is, you can see like, oh, was that there before? And I think there might be like an audio cue, like a kind of a humming noise uh-huh, too. Uh-huh. But that was one of those where you kind of have to fiddle around with this bridge and this lava just to really figure out what you're doing. And, uh, you know, for better or worse, a lot of mist is like that, where it's like, there's <laughs> a, a, a machine here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm just going to flip everything. And then eventually you're like, oh, I think I get what's happening here. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that's why I really love Mist. It's just like there's no explanation. Yeah. That's the puzzles. That's, that's probably my favorite yeah. thing is you just you find a machine and you go, OK, and you, you know, rub your hands together. And I'm like, time to figure out what this does. And you start flipping <laughs> yeah. this and you make notes and you're like, all right, and this and that. Oh, that moves up three when I move this switch. This moves up five, and you start doing math, and it's, I don't know. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I, th- I think it's funny. It's because contrary to something like the seventh guess, where it also wouldn't tell you what you're supposed to do, but it, it was just like, it, it wasn't as fun, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it was like, well, do I, de- do I need to move all the chess pieces from the left to the right or put them all in black and white? These are a lot more, I feel like, there's a lot more logic to this where you, once you Mm -hmm. kind of play around with it, you can deduce your own rules. Yeah. Plus they're kind of these unique like systems, you know, there's a lot of creativity Mm -hmm. in building these machines and, and equipment and how it all functions together and what it does. So it's a lot of cool to figure it out. It's a lot of fun. So once you activate this, this motor thing, you then can turn on the steam engine and this uh, this one was an interesting puzzle because there's actually three layers of steam things. And what you need to do is you have to ri- rise and lower between those three levels and activate like the... It's like one of those power grid things where you're like, you need to have exactly this much power. And right. some of them give you more power than you need and some of them give you less power. Mm-hmm. How did you do on that one? I, you know, I went into it and I was pretty sure I knew what I was doing. And I think ultimately it was because you've got this gauge and it shows you kind of pressure and yeah. uh, you you open one valve and that will remove the pressure, like decrease the pressure a certain amount or increase it a certain amount. And so I was like, okay, I need to do the math thing where I it, it ends up such that the pressure lands on this exact line and then yeah. we're good to go. And then I think there's a, a big lever at the bottom that you pull to like finally... Yeah. Yep. inflate the so, airship that's there lock it in yep. i actually didn't know there was a third level i thought there was only two. Oh, interesting because you you can't just rise and lower at your own whim right you kind of have to you have to set up something so you, the pressure can't be over a certain level so you kind of have to shut everything down to raise i don't know it's a little it, it's a little difficult to mm. to remember exactly how to do that and then after that um we have moved this little 
blimp or something. Uh, but of course, it hits a gate, and you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> now I got to figure out how to open this gate. Yep. Uh, and we just saw the thing that I was stuck on for the longest time, which is there's this little porthole. And you can look out that porthole. By, by the way, there's like six or seven portholes, and only <laughs> one you can look out. Oh, yeah. And then you can actually flip the water wheel to basically catch the water, you know, like, you know, move the, the um, flaps down to catch the water or make them parallel to the water. Did you catch that one right away? No, no. I remember that now. And okay. I think maybe right, somebody, yeah. somebody had given me a hint, like, because Mist does this a lot where there's these long hallways and you get comfortable just going up and down them. But it turns <laughs> yeah. out at one of the little spots, if you turn, there's like a path or a door or a little mm -hmm. switch or something like that. So you just always got to do your best and be diligent to look at everything. Yep. All right. So walk me through this puzzle. I had to look this up. I still don't really understand it. Did you solve it on your own? Levels? I solved it and I tried different things. Uh, what was it? There's little symbols. Uh, so this is like the big cylindrical yeah. kind of chamber. Um, and in the center, there's also a big cylindrical uh, container, metal vat or something. And on the sides of it, uh, I think four sides of it, there's like a symbol. And then there's mm -hmm. an interface where you have these three rotating <laughs> cylinders with seemingly like metal plates. And it seems like some well, they sort look of, like kind of like circuits, right? Yeah, kind of moving it's, the circuits it's like around. a little power grid that you got to line up. So I was like, OK, get the power, you know, to flow freely through all these. Um, and what I eventually tried was like, for example, one of the symbols would be looks like a Roman numeral three. So I was like, OK, I guess I got to try and create that symbol with these circuits because there's one, two or three paths that could connect. And so I believe that's what it ended up being or something similar. Mm. Uh, you try and that's just, interesting. I think that's what it was. At least okay. that was my initial um, guess. I, I had to look it up cause I, I was convinced that I didn't have the information. Mm. So those numbers were actually the, uh, the numbering system that was in, that was introduced in Riven. If you remember that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. remember remember <laughs> you go to you go to like the I you go like there's a little classroom mm, and remember mm -hmm, there was like mm -hmm. a little guy with a shark and it would count. Yep, 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 yep. Those th yeah, those numbers and and that's why I'm like, oh, oh I forget which number lot is which. Oh, and man. so I figured that some other age would have that information, but no, I don't think those numbers were needed to know. Interesting. Uh, anyway, I looked it up. I think all you need to do is make sure all the circuits connect. Just connect. Uh, the problem is. <laughs> It, what was connected and the problem is there's no it's not like there's electricity flowing through it yeah there's not so it's not it, it's like it just stays static and it doesn't really respond to like am i doing a good job so i just didn't yeah i don't know that's how miss goes sometimes you have to like invest <laughs> yeah. and solve it in a way yeah. you think will work and maybe it does maybe it yeah. doesn't once that's done you kind of ferry this uh boat across so you get this amazing epic treat of this like little tiny island just bursting out of the water and floating above water yeah this was really interesting and then the whole kind of section around it is like anti-gravity and it, it's yeah. it's where i think you start or close to where you start on the map yeah. and you can take an airship or a little yeah a little airship on the track across to it and there's a porthole on the bottom you can open up and then do you oh do you have to actually move this in a certain way but you no nope. no it's just there yeah, yeah there's all these floating rocks and they create this symbol and you're you'll write it down kind of automatically once you see it and that's one uh, of yeah. the three symbols which means I, i'm glad my character knew to write yeah. that down because i wouldn't i'm like how did you know to do that all right oh cool. my gosh i'd be writing every anything that looked closely like a symbol down i'd be like okay that's uh you yeah. know, there's a branch. It's obviously a symbol. Yeah. That's a circle. That's a symbol. Right. And that's the end of Voltaic, the Voltaic yeah. Age. I, I like that. I, I, I like, like that I like one. That it's probably my second favorite. Yeah. We got another one here. Uh, we just jump, pretty much jump immediately to the next age. Uh, I, can, I don't remember what this one was called. This one is Edana. Edana. Yeah, I didn't like it. It, it was kind of... I. Uh, this was one where the first half I was cool with, and then the second half, oh, yeah, I got so lost, and it just felt like I was going in circles so much. There were some really interesting um, ideas they had going on. I love the idea they have where there's these plants, and like one of the plants like has like a magnifying glass, basically, and you could focus light, mm -hmm. and like 
I think you burn another plant out of the way in order to give you access to, um, you know, an, a further area. There's a lot of uh, interesting kind of plant designs they did. Um, but yeah, like like I said, the first part was was interesting, and they they based the whole age kind of around this bird that you see at the beginning that uh, eventually mm -hmm. needs your help, and you break out. Um, yeah, this is the part you're talking about where mm. you shine the light with a magnifying glass. Yeah. When you when you look at that thing, it honestly looks like an eyeball. And and I basically when I saw that eyeball like explode because I had like shown light into it, I was just like, <laughs> oh, 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 that's you painful. felt that because like all this fluid comes oh, out. It's like yeah. oh, God. yeah, juicy. Oh, she's yeah. Mm. But it's got like this. Yeah, the inside of this little eyeball thing is this. It's like an eel or something. It's got electricity. It's, I guess it's not an it's eel. It's a little like manta ray looking thing. Manta ray, yeah. 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 This was an interesting Maybe mechanic. Manta. Like there, there's like a, you would drain the water, I think, out of these kind of huge plant basins. And then the manta ray would like go into this sack and then <laughs> it, it would be powered. Then you'd explode the, yeah. Then you'd explode the sack and it would go on to the next area. Yeah. It was, it does was, it look like an eyeball though? Yeah, it really well, does. It's very, <laughs> yeah, veiny and, yeah, it does. <laughs> I wasn't a huge fan of this, uh, mostly because it, anytime you try to like create a clear path through organic material, <laughs> it, it just is often very difficult to be like, can I walk here? Is this like, right. am, is there a ramp here? Yeah. Is there a bridge? Like, I, what am I missing here? And I did definitely later on, as probably you did too, mm. got stuck missing a section that yep. I didn't know I could walk on. Yep, this is exactly what came to mind when I was thinking about, you know, it, areas that were hard to to see or you would miss and spend, you yeah. know, half an hour running around trying to find out where you need to go. Um, I, I thought it was pretty cool that they put in this little feature of, of kind of Tarzaning across gaps yeah. with a, a a plant that conveniently has like a handle on it that you would fly across with. Um, yeah, well, the first time you you use this thing, you try to go, you try to do the Tarzan thing, and there's a branch in your way, so you can't get across. Mm. So you need this little squee. Right. Oh, which by the way, in order to get to this age, you needed to coax this squee over to these uh, these little. I'm going to call them berries or nuts or whatever. Yeah. And those expand. And that allows you to bridge the gap uh, over a, a little small chasm to get to this, this age here. So we then reuse that to get the squee onto a, that log that was preventing us from going across the, uh, the cat, the gap with uh, the vine. And it actually it, like it, makes the the uh bridge cave in there so yeah. it's no longer a problem mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you keep finding these little yeah like video recordings of um Saavedro kind of talking about what's happened uh, in his past um yeah. that he's blaming atris for and how he's going to get revenge in this all of that um, I, I gotta say brad just he, he just has a such a good job he here, was all in it you know yeah. i think i think yeah it's i th he, he yeah he i think it's a good thing yeah he he is all in oh yeah but he's not like he's not he's a talented actor is, and i is. think other actors would come in if, if they had a no name they come in and the delivery of these things would just be subpar and it would be laughable right mm -hmm. because he's very angry about his wife yeah. he's basically 20 years he was stuck and his wife is gone and so he's yelling at the player yeah, yeah. but brad brad does so good it was so fun to watch him play, he really does play just like he, he he makes the the story for this game like it's all surrounding yeah, him does. and he's pretty much besides atris and catherine in the beginning he's the only other human i think that you encounter and you encounter him a lot uh well the little baby little baby right well yeah the baby too <laughs> <laughs> the little baby doesn't have yeah, any speaking fair. lines but. that's fine <laughs> So you're yeah. descending uh, through this this kind of almost like jungly area, but also seems like it's a giant tree with like all this other foliage around. And this is where I got stuck for a while. Um, yeah, there's like a massive flower kind of blooming in the bottom, and you can aim light at it, and it'll like alert its tentacles and. 
it was a weird. It, it was it just was it was weird, tough to fight, figure out. Yeah, because it's like one 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 flower is like not getting the nutrients it needs, whereas the other one has too much or whatever. So you have to tr- basically transfer the thing from one to the other. And I guess this is what the the study was trying to show you was like, hey, mm. when you when you have the electricity, the butterfly things come and fly next to the <laughs> pollen or something. This one was a little little weird in my opinion, even for mists, um, for mist, right? It yeah. was a little like I'm not sure what's going on here, <laughs> but things seem to be progressing, so I'm gonna just keep I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, I, the puzzles were not great. They would have been it would have been more tolerable if the pathing path wasn't an issue. But there were several places that I was like, I where is a path? And then I just had to start yeah. going screen by screen and like spam clicking basically until I found one. And, and well, you end up kind of going up inside this flower and you get it to like spurt out some spores or juice and and that triggers the bird from the beginning to to come and, and grab you. And it takes you all the way back to the beginning to its nest, which, by the way, you were like 10 feet away from at one point. And <laughs> yeah. uh, there you find the next symbol, if I recall correctly. And that's correct. Head back to Janan and. And then we go uh, almost immediately to Amatria. Mm. And I got to say, I love the artistic direction for this one. Yeah, this one was cool. Right. It's, it, um, there's there's like Japanese like pagoda style uh, buildings and a big like central um, Japanese yeah. building as well. And then there's some kind of like side paths that like, I don't know, they're, they're almost like. I don't want to say Minecrafty, but you know they're they're very oh yeah it's yeah. like voxel kind of um, <laughs> yeah. base you know it's like yeah. there's a lot of this like hexagon shape that mm-hmm. creates the land It's pretty cool and the uh, all of these uh, buildings are over water and then there's these bridges mm-hmm. there so you mm-hmm. have this really cool this really cool scenery of you got the sunset hitting the you know, refracting off the water and then you got the skybox there and then you got those brilliant red buildings. It, visually, it was a complete treat. I, I, I liked this one a lot. Yeah, and, and all, also, oh, I was gonna say, you got to go up really high here. Oh, up, oh, you did go pretty high. and to, to see the scenery, right? Yeah, yeah. And the whole thing looks kind of like an amusement park because it seems like there's like this roller coaster <laughs> track <laughs> that's connecting everything. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. Um. And you can't have mist without a roller coaster, though, right? <laughs> uh. Oh, gosh. You know, I was um, very side note, but I started playing uh, Mist, the, the the remade version, like the I think it's yeah, okay. the Android made one. And I had forgotten about the underground um, trolley or whatever that you take. That, oh, man, that puzzle. <laughs> Ugh, yeah. Anyways, sorry. Was that, did they have VR in that? I don't think it had VR, but that would no, be cool. Okay. That'd be cool. So there's a couple different puzzles here. The first one is you have a, what looks to be like, um, if you have like a six shooter revolver, you know how sometimes <laughs> you'll have, or it's more like a, one of those cap guns, right? Yeah. yeah Where you yeah. have that little plastic with like six little gunpowder thing. Yeah. It's a chamber. And, uh, it's like a, a gun chamber. Yeah. And so you have a ball that alternates between the two of those. And so what what you do is you activate this puzzle and that you see like this this central I think it's like crystal or ice I don't know what what this is yeah they were all like glass or crystal or something glass yeah. okay and so a- almost every puzzle in this game revolves or sorry uh, from this world mm-hmm. this age revolves around the central tower like spinning up this glass or crystal ball and then shooting it down into the puzzle. And what you need to do here is you need to basically, you have to insert these little pegs and these pegs designate when you, it should shoot the ball from one uh, chamber to the other. Yeah, from one side and, to the other. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And in order to, you have to basically line it up such that, because not all the chambers have things that can hold it. Some of mm-hmm. the bottoms are out and sometimes the ceiling is above yeah. it. So you have to kind of like, and a couple times I had it like smash into the ceiling, oh, which yeah. is fun. Oh yeah. Um, but that one is just kind of some trial and error. You know, you, you know, boop boop boop, and you uh, swing that ball back into somewhere else, and I think it like crashes into a a wall or something. I don't remember exactly why you want to do that. 
Um, I don't remember. I think it, I think it actually goes like into the the central building and like kind of triggers something like. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. It, like it <laughs> completes it basically. Now this is the yeah. puzzle that I was. Uh, this <laughs> this was how I started off. Yeah. Well, why don't you walk us me. through it then? Oh my god. So uh, yeah. <laughs> You've got these three sections of bridge, kind of like before. Or, I'm sorry, it's this big, like, kind of canal thing. And you can tilt the it canal. It kind of looks like what you'd use to, to put cement down, like if you had a cement truck. Yeah, it's a very yeah. large one of those, right? Yeah, that big, uh, where the cement actually flows down as it's coming out. And it's like a little trough. And you pull the switch, and you'll see the central building rise up and somehow, like, throw this crystal ball, and it follows a path, and then it will probably just smash into the side of this trough and you're like, Oh, okay. It's too high. I need to lower it or this, some, this or that. Um, and so you can kind of choose between a left middle or right setting and that will adjust the balance of the, the trough there and nothing seems to work at first. And if you keep going, you'll find this room where there's like a, a ball you can assemble with uh, four it's different counterweights. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. It's a counterweight. So you can balance it properly. And there's metal pieces, wood pieces, and crystal pieces, I think. Yep. Um, yep. And I just spent... And But there's not enough. There's only like two of each. Right. Yeah. You can't... Uh, yeah. So I, I remember... Yeah. You can go and look at the the ball that yeah. activates onto the pad. Which, by the way, you, you might want to ask yourself, because the ball is made of wood, mm -hmm. but it has like one part that's crystal. And you might ask yourself, why the heck is there one thing a crystal? And that's where Saavedra's book comes in because he's gloating about how he's he's sabotaged all of Atreus's little lessons here. Mm. So that's why the ball is not uh, just completely wood. And also, when you go to the counterweight, you see that the counterweight has been smashed. Also, mm. so it's kind of it's kind of reinforces that whole Saavedra's like ruining Atreus's master plans. Anyway, go ahead, keep going. Uh, well, I was just going to mention that. This is the puzzle where you use those those hanging little guys I was talking about from before in the laboratory because it shows you how the how the balance works where you have like one guy all the way to the right and then you have two guys on the left but they're kind of like for, closer to the center and it ends up balancing. Oh, and okay. I, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't remember that at all. <laughs> so I didn't put that together. That's a deep cut. That's it a, was, that's, that would be tough. Yeah. That's one of the things. Again, you write down write down things and miss because, but it was also just kind of it was kind of hard to tell that the puzzle was using that as a reference or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, I think the way I figured it out is I basically I I I like put the lever all the way to the left, and then I got it to a part where it was like, okay, it was too heavy on one sec with one, and then too light on the other. Mm. So I'm like, all right, well I know it can't be there. So I need to move the the fulcrum back a little bit and then change up the, right, the yeah. distribution of the weight there. Yeah, I I tried so much. I think I ended up just asking for the answer because uh, again, okay. this was the first puzzle. I was on it for like an hour and <laughs> I just got frustrated. Ooh. I was like, all right, let's let's move on. Unfor a, a, a a poor first impression of Amateria. A lot of people were saying that it's their favorite place, and I think yeah. I kind of set myself up for uh, uh, certain expectations that that were unmeetable. Um, so it ended up having less of an impact yeah. on me now that it's later. Like, yeah, I like the idea of this whole Island kind of being a, it, it fits in and ends up being like a cool, like roller coaster ride at the end. It's just pretty cool. Um, but at the time I, I was just like, that's oh. a funny, yeah, <laughs> that's a funny point. There is so, setting those expectations of, if someone's like, Oh, this if everyone's like, this is the best. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't click with you. You're like, wow, this is actually the worst. <laughs> and it's a, you're it's, expecting so much more. It's a common thing you have to be aware of when you're streaming stuff because, you know, everybody's like, oh, he's going to play this. It's going to be awesome. And so then you're like, oh, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And then maybe it's not. Maybe it's great, yeah. but not as amazing as people make it sound. Yeah. But uh, speaking of sound, nice segue into this oh. last puzzle, I think. Uh, I didn't use sound at all here. Yes, you do. Because no, I didn't use sound. I didn't use yeah. sound at all. No, you go to no, these. Me. You go to these branching. Like there's a central gazebo that branches off to these side rooms, and at each room there's a sound playing, and there's a circular like portal, and depending on what sound is playing, you can see the sound waves going like, boom, boom, 
yeah which is cool yeah Super it is cool. very cool looking um and what it is is you have to set each one to a specific sound such that yeah. as a ball rolls through it it won't get smashed by the sound presumably that's as true it but i didn't i didn't use sound really? to solve the puzzle Ooh. wait how, how did you figure out what sounds do you like so you're saying that you did it by recognizing the sound and what sounds needed to be there yeah because i think that you find this panel that's way up that kind of l- lets you overlook the whole thing and uh if i recall correctly that panel whenever you would like you would press play basically and the thing would go and you'd see the ball going through and if i recall c- r- correctly it, it it would play the sounds as it passes through there Huh, I don't remember playing sounds, no. but it, it is it, what the way I did it was. Yeah, it basically that is it's showing you the solution you need to do, um, and then you just need to align the uh, the shapes to match that. But the problem is you don't know from uh, from looking at that little display. Yeah. It looks like the leftmost one is the first one and then it goes clockwise, but that's not the case. Yeah. It's like the middle one is the first one. So you have <laughs> to take what is the first, the first thing on the, the puzzle or like the, you call it like nine o'clock. You have to take that thing and then align the first thing it hit the ball hits. Right. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. In the real <laughs> world. Uh, so it's, it's a little convoluted to explain. Um, but yeah, that's how I solved it. Mm. And then, and then the, after oh yeah, that, I forgot about you, this this final. Yeah, puzzle. you get to go up to the very very top and overlook the whole island, and I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna have to solve all four puzzles again, am I? <laughs> yeah, if you have them in place, then the balls will will roll through. And uh, yeah, this puzzle was real interesting because you have to set up this this panel that's got a bunch of like uh, circular components to it that you can arrange. You can rotate them, basically. It's like a grid of, what is it, 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 or something? And there's lines on them, and the goal is to align them so that they pass from... (laughs) This is so hard. If you're just listening on audio, I don't know how you're envisioning (laughs) this at all. Okay, so I think think there's there's northeast, southwest, and what you need to do is you need to get the ball to hit all of the stations you just did, so east, west, and south... And then hit north on the last one. And I think you can start on any of them and end, but you always have to end on the north one. And it has to hit all three of them. It was, so it, it was, you basically have yeah. to, you, ha- you, you more or less, you have to construct a train track to mm-hmm. go from the east to the west to the south to the north. And then the ball will go through all those puzzles you just did. Mm. And then. By and the reason you need to hit all three of those puzzles is because all three of those puzzles will raise one portion of the bridge mm-hmm. on the north side, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and with all three portions of the bridge raised on the north side, the ball can clear can cleanly go across and find you the last symbol you're looking for. So yeah, but the most exciting <laughs> part is once you have it all done, you pull this lever up top, and like the yeah. the container you're in, like you actually ride the whole <laughs> so cool track, and I think that was the big thing that everybody remembers and is like oh it's so cool because you're working on (laughs) individual puzzles and it ends up being a big you know roller coaster ride at the end (laughs) which i was like okay all right fine (laughs) i I think if you are listening on the podcast it does behoove you especially for this game to come take a look at the uh the youtube video because i think it will you know seeing visualizing (laughs) this stuff is is very interesting if you haven't seen it before uh, and will shed a bunch of light on to what's going on here. So having said that, we have completed all three of the the linking ages off of uh, the main one. What did we call this one? Janai? Uh, Jananan. 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 Mm-hmm. And then we're going to Narayan. Narayan, yeah. Which, Narayan, yeah. Which is which where? Is the learning age. Yeah, right? which is where Saavedro is. Saavedro is mm-hmm. here. And this is going to be the last... Uh, the last kind of it's not even a major it's it's pretty short yeah there's like um and there's a bunch puzzles. of ball that, yep and there's a bunch of endings and we we we're going to hit most of them not all of them cuz some of them are kind of the same here yeah this one was so, interesting when you get yeah. here you find a huge like library of symbols uh, like tapestries yeah, red tapestries with 
this sort of a gold em- embroidery of these symbols. Yeah, yeah. Something like, I don't know, like 40, 50 symbols total. And they're all... They all have a single word. A word right? associated with them, yeah. And you're like, okay. And, <laughs> yeah, you're like, that's weird. And so some of the words are like nature, balance, chaos, harmony. And you're like, wow, those are aspirational. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, all right, well, we'll just move on. Let's go up the stairs here. And we finally become... Or we finally get face to face with the man himself Saavedra and he's he, it's I love this because he's so he's so angry at himself yeah he and is. he's like hitting himself he's like oh I'm such <laughs> an idiot what I thought I thought that I was important enough for Atreus yeah. to come here but he did it he, he sent you <laughs> so. yeah he's yeah these are these are the oh, good man. acting sections where he's just uh just interacting with you and kind of acting in a final manner and however he's you're dealing yeah. with him. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. So he's still, he's got relation in his hand right now. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just like, he's also got this hammer on his, <laughs> yeah. it's worth noting as hammer that looks like it's made of, uh, a sturdy rock, a sturdy stick, yeah. and a rock on it, and he'll actually use this to beat you yeah, later that's good, on that's good. if you do some of the bad endings there. It's um, like a gavel. But yeah, this is yeah. <laughs> going to pass judgment on you. <laughs> and this this is great because this is Savedra really coming to terms with and, and sort of like breaking down, yeah. being like, I thought I was a lot more important than I am. Right. Well, I thought a relation was a lot more important than it is. And if you actually read the journals, I'm not sure if you looked at any of the journals mm-hmm. that you pick up, Lobos. Yeah. But if you read them, you get a sense in the, the way they fill in the story. You get a sense of how he he almost I think he accidentally links into Atrus's workshop, and it, or is like sort of surprised that he actually gets there and he kind of stalks around. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Formulates this idea to sort of sabotage his stuff. So, uh, the. Uh, to clarify what happened, I don't remember exactly what, but the brothers somehow basically destroy, uh, so he thinks, this, his civilization, and and yeah. Saavedra gets stuck in this area that we're in now, right, in Orion, and there's these puzzles, and he's been here for 20 years, I think, and he's like... You can't solve them. He's like, no, no, I've tried for so long, and I cannot solve them. Of course, you come in here and solve them all in like an hour, but... Uh, yeah, no <laughs> You know, really, and, and uh, he he does call out. He's like, "Hey, man, if you solve them, you better watch out because I know what happens when you link when you open a link. That right. link doesn't close. So right. he's kind of like a little taunting you there. Yeah, he's like, if you get back, like, then I can get back too. But what so th- you do have the kind of the the clues to solve this. Yeah, which, did you did you figure that I out? I did. Right away? I did. I recognize. Nice. I recognize the words. I mean, it took me a little bit, but then I started going through my books. And yeah. yeah, in the book that Atrus gives you, he's talking about creating Narayan as a as a new um, place for the Danai, I think. And he's he's the Dunny, he, the Dunny. Yeah, he's he's uh, really like struggling to to figure out what like values and ideals he wants in order to create this world that you know, so that it, he doesn't have terrible things happen again. Um, and so there's a couple of statements in there that have these these keywords like balance and nature and and that uh, that are kind of italicized, if I recall correctly. Um, yeah, they're bolded. Yeah, yeah bolded. And, and I remember because when I was reading it, I, there were things that seemed really weird and I couldn't comprehend it. And so it kind of stuck out in my mind. And like some of the things were like, where like time transcends power or some some weird combination like that, where it's so, like reading the words, you understand what they mean, but yeah. like how does this make sense? And when I saw that, I'm like, wait, I seem to remember weird stuff like this being written in the book. Yeah, Fair enough. Yep, yep. That's what that's what made me. Uh, that's what reminded me was these kind of these that's statements, cool. these words, and I was like, oh. yeah. Um. Yeah, so you you basically find the tapestries with the words, and those have like these symbols, which are kind of hard to 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 enter in. It's not super obvious um, how those should be entered in, and I don't know if there's an order you had to do them in, or you could do any phrase could go in any of the 
the pattern. Uh, so, so basically, yeah. there's like four circles, and each of the circles. So well, there's there's two puzzle parts, right? There's one puzzle part that only has four entries, and there's another puzzle part that has four times four entries. So basically, sixteen entries. And I wasn't sure. Each of those entries is a four uh, four word sequence. And I wasn't sure if you had to put those in any sort of order or not. Yeah, I... How did I... There was something to clue you. Like, it was basically an uh, uh, an up, left, right, and down of, yeah. of these circular... Uh, what it was is like these sectional. So it's like a circle, and then there's kind of elaborate, um, I don't know, lacing in the middle. And you can toggle off like segments of all of the lacing such that it can form any of the symbols that you found on the tapestries. And so you need to you need to light them up um, based on the words. And so, for example, I've got I pulled up the, the some of the statements here. There's things like energy powers future motion. And so you would, that was the one that, yeah, that one. was the one that stuck out in my head. <laughs> yeah. So you would see that all of these words are on the tapestries and they have each have their own symbol. So you're like, OK, how do I input these? And with trial and error, you, you can figure it out. And I, I, again, I do think there was a way to hint it. Um, I think I ultimately just did like one, two, three, four, like one top, yeah. two left, three right, and four bottom. Yeah, I think that's what I did also. So I'm curious if you could rearrange those in that in mm -hmm. a different order there. So once you solve that, um, it, that basically is the puzzle that Saavedra wasn't able to solve, and it lowers this barrier. So he's been trapped on this. There's almost like two barriers, almost like an airlock, right? Where there's one barrier that contains where the little puzzles are, and then there's right. a, a larger barrier that contains the ship that he wants to fly away on. I think it's even like it's the whole to... area. Like the whole area is covered in a dome, and oh, you have yeah. to you have to get... He has to get outside that barrier, but then if you if you close the interior barrier, then the whole dome barrier is active, and mm. he can't leave on the ship. So he's like, all right, you know, I'm going to step outside. You close this interior door, and then you remove the exterior barrier, right? You would have to bring up the interior barrier, so he can't do it by himself. So he's like, you do it, and... And I'll go back home, and we'll forget everything. You know, I'll drop the book. Yeah. I'll drop yeah. a. He drops the book. <laughs> yes. He drops the book. There's a lot of. He drops uh, the book off a cliff. There. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what you the true ending here? Well, actually, there's kind of like two true endings. Is you actually try? So he goes through. We're gonna call this the airlock, right? So he grows right. through the part one of the airlock, mm. and then you can shut the airlock behind him. So now he's literally stuck in this airlock <laughs> and he's like, Oh no, you outsmarted me. Yeah. And he's, and then, so you go back to him and then he's like, all right, man. All right. He, you win. Here's relation. Please do the right thing. And there's two options here. Which one did you do? Did you, did you, I did almost everything free? that you could do. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can, uh, you can open up the exterior barrier so he can go back. Because it turns out that his civilization is still around and he can connect to it from here. Um, I don't remember when that revelation happens, but uh, yeah. So you can allow him to, to go back home, basically. Be with his family, who apparently are, have been there for 20 years and don't know where he is or whatever. Um, or you can just keep him locked up and then just go back, <laughs> go back to yeah. uh, uh, what the original age there uh tomana tomana is the the, the his yeah, home that's age. Right. um but there's a lot of cool ways to end the game differently where he'll get mad and he'll he'll smash you with his hammer or he'll smash you yep throw or, the book can, uh, and if you go back to atris without relation right him and catherine are there they have kind of like soot all over them from the the fire putting out the fire and uh, they're because they're kind of like, oh, oh, you saved, you failed to <laughs> save relation. Oh, okay, all right. They're very disappointed. And, then, <laughs> and yeah. then it's just it's just like a load screen that says you failed to save relation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's there's two variations where you do save relation. One you can keep Saavedra locked up, and it just kind of cuts to a thing 
it's almost identical, but at the very end, it's like, I could only wonder what would have happened if we would have shown some humanity to right. Savage or whatever. Yeah. Um, but this is the true ending, which is basically, we got back the Book of Relation, we... Um, uh, and then we save, so we let Saavedra go back to his homeland, and uh, we basically are seeing Atris here uh, monologuing while writing. You know, no doubt linking another age or something. Yeah, and basically <laughs> causing like, hey, more problems. Uh, <laughs> exactly. He's happy to know that Narayan is safe, um, and that Saavedra has gone back, um, and that basically he's got a chance to right the wrongdoings of uh, Cirrus and Aknar, those two jerks. Yeah, man. Where are like I don't even know where they are anymore. Are they? They, they, I, I don't know. They just kind of like they. You see their pictures Can, kind of uh, in a couple different places, like, uh, like a. Um, are they canonically on a wall? Are they stuck in the books? Like, no, I don't think they're. No. Uh, oh yes, they are. Because the, the are, ending yeah. of one, like the good ending, yeah, you leave them in the book yeah. and you go talk to they Atris, are. Yeah, but Sav- the thing is, Savedro doesn't know that. Here. That's yeah, yeah, true. I mean, he's been stuck for twenty years somewhere <laughs> else. So yeah. So we got a cool little Patreon uh, credit screen here, hey. just going up here. I wanted to add that. I thought cool. that was kind of cool. And we'll be adding, uh, of course, as people join on and our people um, continue, uh, they get like additional numbers there. So nice. that is Miss 3 Exile. Wow, I feel like we talked nonstop for uh, 60 minutes or so. But I, man, I, I, I liked it. It was yeah, fun. Yeah, those are some complicated puzzles. So you can really talk about <laughs> them for a while. But yeah, it was fun. It was good. It's, I love the Mist it's, games. It's always tough to try to describe a puzzle in Mist, which, by the way, are often indescribable indes- when you look at them to begin with, yeah. right? And it's hard to describe those in a matter of like a minute and a half and move <laughs> on to the next thing. But I think I think you did a great job, Lobos. Thank you. We did our best. <laughs> we did our best. But, oh, man, what a fun time. So that is going to wrap up... Um, you know, Miss Three Exile. Thank you so much uh, to all of the Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Uh, we did get a new Patreon supporter, Slasher Veils. Thank you so much, Slasher Veils, uh, for continuing that 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 chain of Patreon subscribers, bringing us one step closer to our goal of twenty five to cover Earthbound. Earthbound. I think we've got like thir- 13 right now, so we're nice. over halfway there. there. Uh, so let's see if you want to, if you would like to, uh, and again, any level counts there, including the dollar level, and then you get added to our cool little c- credit screen. So if you're mm-hmm. interested in supporting uh, the Saturday Morning Gaming Show on Patreon, you can head over to patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Gaming Show, or of course, you know, you can just go to Saturday Morning Gaming Show.com. And you can get all the links right there. Fancy. So, yeah. Miss Three is done. What done. game are we going to do next? I'm super excited about this one. I got a copy of it right here. Take a look at it. We're going to be doing Goldeneye yes. 007 Goldeneye for the N64. <sighs> is this game as good as we remember? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, Dude, it, I, it is. It is. It's so good. It is. It, it's good. But we need I, I to play it say, again. I will say I've been I've been playing it. Oh, nice. Um, and it the controls take a little bit getting used to as this is N sixty four first person shooter, you know. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. Uh, once you get used to it, you know, it's good. So I'll be looking out to watching you play that on your stream. Yes. Uh, and you all will be looking out to listening to that uh, that episode in June, right? Mm-hmm, June, mm-hmm. We're gonna do uh, Golden Eye on sixty four. Alamaxi is gonna be coming back. Lobos is gonna be coming back. I'm gonna be coming back, and we're going to be getting some uh, good old N sixty four goodness going on here. It's gonna be great. Well, sadly, we have reached the end credits of this episode, and we wanted to thank everyone for listening to us on the podcast. We do a new podcast monthly, so be sure to listen on iTunes, Google, or whatever your platform of choice is, and or just check out SaturdayMorningGamingShow.com, as well as feedback. We've got a contact form, or if you really want to, you can send us an email, SaturdayMorningGamingShow at gmail.com, or you can tweet at us on Twitter, at SaturdayMGaming. I said Saturday, but it's Saturday. Uh, uh. Saturday. Saturday. (laughs) Saturday Gaming. (laughs) 
Hey, and if you're listening to us on a platform that allows us to rate, uh, allows you to rate us, please do so. We'd love to get your ratings on there. And of course, a special shout out to Technoax for much of the music on this episode. For Saturday morning gaming show, I am Lobos. And I'm the Fat Wizard. We'll see you in June with Goldeneye for the N64. Bye.